In this pre-algebra video, we're talking in Chapter 2, Lesson 1. We're going to talk about solving equations with rational coefficients. Our objective is, as the student, I can solve equations with rational coefficients because I will apply my fraction dividing skills. Or, one way of just explaining it, your multiplying fraction skills. But we'll talk about it. There's two ways of explaining it. So, solving equations with rational coefficients. As a, uh, as a note, psst, by the way, rational coefficients, those are just fractions. We're saying we have a fraction coefficient. That's what we're saying. So, rational is a fancy word for fraction. Remember that. So, some, some voca two vocabulary words we need to have to understand what we're going to do in this section. We're going to talk about the multiplicative inverses, and that is two numbers with a product of one. For example, if you have four, fifth, four fifths, excuse me, and you take, let's say, the reciprocal of that, because by the way, multiplicative inverse, that's a fancy word for reciprocal. Um, reciprocal, I th yeah, that's about the right, okay. All right, so in other words, if you take four fifths and you flip it, so you flip it, it becomes five over four. What the mul multiplicative inverse property is saying, if you multiply those together, it'll equal one. So if you actually test it, 4 fifths times 5 over 4, you would get, remember, multiply straight across, 4 times 5 is 20 on top, and then the same thing on bottom, 5 times 4 is 20. So 20 over 20, well, that equals 1, positive 1. Now, as a note, even if it was a negative fraction, let's say negative 2 over 3 times negative 3 over 2, uh, a negative times a negative is a positive, so it's going to become positive anyways. And then up top, 2 times 3 is 6. On the bottom, 3 times 2 is 6. So you have 6 over 6. Well, that equals 1 as well. We said it was positive. So it's still going to equal positive 1, even if it was negative. That's the multiplicative inverse property. In other words, when you multiply reciprocals by each other, they always equal positive 1. All right, our last vocabulary word, coefficient. This one should sound familiar. Coefficient is the number in front of the variable. Technically, it's the number being multiplied by a term. And in other words, this is called a term. You know it's a term because terms are separated with addition and subtraction. So what's in a term is always going to be just multiplying and or exponents, stuff like that. So a term, the thing in front of all of it is the coefficient. In other words, it's the number in front. The coefficient could be a whole number. The coefficient could be a fraction. And the coefficient can be a decimal. Oh, and it can be a negative version of any of those. So the coefficient can be anything, any kind of a number in front of your variable. So it would help to understand what a coefficient was. So when we talk about solving with rational coefficients, we're talking about solving with a fraction. Specifically, what to do when you have a fraction in front of your variable, such as an example like that. What to do to move that. That's what we're talking about. So in the past, I've primarily only explained this to my students in one way, one basic way that kind of helps you understand what to do and help you understand how and why. But here's what I'm going to do. Side by side, I'm going to show you guys, um, I'm going to remind you of our original way of doing it on the right side, but then I'm going to show you the slightly faster way of doing it on the left side. And honestly, what I always said stands though, whatever method you choose doesn't matter. As long as whichever one makes sense to you that helps you understand it, go with that one. So I'm going to explain the same thing two different ways, but that way you can, you can choose which one you like. And I, by the way, I will write steps for these on the next slide, and you can choose which method you like, and you can just write the steps for that method. Both methods always work, so it's up to you which one you use. All right, so the first way we always learn how to talk about these is we said, look at it this way. If we were to solve for w, that means we need to get w by itself, which means we need to get rid of its coefficient of 3 fourths. We've always explained this by saying, what operation is this right now when they're touching? And a lot of you realize when they're touching, it's a multiplying relationship. So that means in order to move 3 fourths to the other side, we're going to have to do the opposite of multiplying to move it. We're going to have to divide. And so that's how we would show our work for this. We would divide both sides by 3 fourths. They would cancel out on the left side. And on the left side, we're left with just w. Now, on the right side, we now have to use our fraction skills. How to do 12 divided by 3 fourths. And so we do that by setting it up as 12 over 1. And then how to divide by a fraction. Some of you think of it as keep, change, flip. Some of you think of it as you know how to mul divide because it's multiplying by the reciprocal. Well, that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So times 4 over 3. Now use your fraction skills to see what that equals, and you'll be done. Use your fraction skills all the way down. You end up with w equals 16. 
which means the value of 16, the value of 16, if we put a 16 right here, multiply it by 3 fourths, that would equal 12. So, but long story short, what I want you guys to see is that in order to move a coefficient, we always move it because they're always multiplying when they're touching like that. We move it by dividing and divide both sides. So that was the original version we learned how to do these, the original way and reason. By the way, if that happened to be a negative number, we would just divide it by a negative. We would have had a negative, so we would have had a negative answer, so it would have been negative 16. So if there's a negative in there, it doesn't matter. Just keep track of your negative skills. So the second, slightly faster way, but it's a way that doesn't always make as much sense to people, is using this concept of multiplicative inverses, meaning this. What we're essentially going to do is we're going to jump straight to this step. Rather than showing the in-between of dividing both sides by a fraction, we're going to go straight to multiplying by the reciprocal. But what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. I'm going to, so we're going to use multiplicative inverse property on the left side. So I'm going to show you that right now. So right away, you go straight to multiplying both sides by the multiplicative inverse, by the reciprocal of your coefficient that you're trying to move. So the right side we'll figure out in a minute. The right side is going to be just like the right side we did over here. So we'll get to that in a minute. But here's what I want you to focus on the left side. Here's the rationale. What we just said, when you multiply something, too far, when you multiply something by its reciprocal, it always equals positive 1. That's what we're about to use right here. So in other words, 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. So we have 12 over 12 is what we have. We have 12, and that's not showing up very well. So we have 12 over 12, and 12 over 12 is just 1. So what that means is what we have right here is actually equal to 1. 4 over 3 times 3 over 4. So that means is we have 1 times w, or w times 1. Well, when you multiply by 1, it doesn't do anything, so you can almost ignore it. It essentially cancels out. So what we're saying is if you multiply both sides by the, the multiplicative inverse, by the reciprocal, the, le the coefficient is going to become a 1 in front of the w. So if you did that, you'd be left with just a w on the left side. So in other words, we're almost saying that it cancels out on the, le on the left side. The coefficients do like that. So we're left with w. Now on the right side, we would just do our math just like we did here. We'd show work the exact same way. We would have 12 over 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. So I didn't show quite all the steps for the fraction skills in between like I did on the right side because we already did it once. But I wanted you to see the key difference is rather than explaining divide both sides by the fraction and then remembering how to divide by a fraction, we're jumping straight to the step of just multiplying both sides by the flip, by the reciprocal, by the multiplicative inverse of the fraction, going straight to that. So um, whichever way makes more sense to you, I want you to write the steps for that way. So the next two slides is going to be kind of the steps reminding you how to do that. So if you're using the dividing technique, which is kind of the original way we learned how to explain and understand this, essentially you think of it this way. We separate all coefficients from their variable by division. So in other words, even though it's a fraction, so we're going to divide both sides by that fraction coefficient. Now you just need to apply how to divide by a fraction. So make sure you divide both sides by that fraction. So what we did here, we actually did the, we actually divided. Remember how to divide by a fraction. And then once you do that, simplify and you're done. Let's say you prefer this new way of explaining it. The reasons for the quote unquote multiplicative inverse technique as I'm calling it. I just abbreviated it up here. Um, so if you're doing the multiplicative inverse technique, the first thing you want to do is, ex is understand we want to essentially turn the coefficient into a 1 because if we can turn the coefficient into a 1, we can ignore it. So in order to do that, we multiply both sides by the coefficient's reciprocal. In this example, the coefficient was a 3 fourths, so we multiplied both sides by 4 over 3 because by doing that, 4 over 3 times 3 over 4 we explained equals 1 for the reason of the multiplicative inverse property like we did right here. So we want to turn the coefficient to a 1 so we can ignore it. So oops, wrong slide. So we're going to multiply both sides by its reciprocal. And then step 2 is essentially now just use your fraction skills and do that. Multiply both sides and just to make sure you apply it correctly and simplify when you're all done. And then, oops, wrong slide again. And then you're done. So that is the multiplicative inverse method. Now we're just going to do some examples where essentially I'm going to have you try. You're going to give them a shot, and then you're going to check yourselves, and I'll give you some feedback, and then we're going to do a few of those, and we'll be all done. So these would be a combination of examples and also kind of you try examples. 
So in this first problem, I just want to point out that if one, if this number over here happens to not be a fraction, you can easily make it a fraction by putting it over 1. Then you'll be ready to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 1 sixth. And you'll do that one. Now, but I also want to let you know, for questions like this second example, your coefficient is a mixed number. If that happens, I'm going to recommend that you turn that mixed number to proper fraction first. And to remember how to turn these things into proper fractions, you take the bottom number, multiply it by the big number, take that answer, and add the top. So 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, so that's 7 over 3. So that turns into 7 over 3, W equals 14. So that's the question you're working with for that example. So press pause and, and find the answers for both of these, and then hit play and see how you did. Hit pause. Okay, so now you see the first one. Hit pause if you haven't already done so for the second one. And this is the second one. And we end up with W equals 6. So these are our two examples that I just want to make sure you had as well. Um, for those of you that don't maybe remember the shortcut or you want a brief reminder on how the shortcut works, the shortcut I'm referring to that I've alluded to, and a lot of you may already know it, is when multiplying fractions, the shortcut's only for multiplying fractions, it's called cross-canceling, cross-simplifying, uh, I believe it's also called one other thing. Uh, but it's given out quite a few things. Sometimes you just call it dividing out common factors, whatever you want to call it. So in other words, what you do is you look at things that are diagonal, such as 3 and 1. 3 and 1 do not simplify. They don't have any common factors. But take a look at 14 and 7. Imagine just kind of like a fraction. 14 and 7 do simplify. They have something in common. For example, 7 goes into both of them. So 7 goes into 7 one time. Fourteen, um, 7 goes into 14 two times, so you can replace them like that. And then when you multiply straight across, if you did your 2 times 3, 2 times 3 would give us 6, and on the bottom we would have 1 times 1, and then 1 times 1 would just give us 1, so we would have 6 over 1, and 6 over 1 equals 6. So we would get the same answer, we would just save time with multiplying, and this is definitely your friend, especially when you're multiplying very large numbers. So you may see me using the shortcut and a few uh, multiplying fraction problems from here on out. All right, for these next few problems, you're going to try them first, definitely. All right, give this first one a shot, then um, and hit pause now to see and, be, and try it yourself. Then see how you did. So you should get it down to this point. But I'm going to take one more opportunity to remind you guys how to do this shortcut if you're wondering how to do it. You look at 4 and 32, for example. In this case, 4 goes into both of them. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 32 eight times. And then go the other way. In this case, it does that as well. 9 goes into both of these. Um, sometimes it might only be 3, but in this case, it's 9. 9 goes into 9 one time. 9 goes into 27 three times. So now you're going to multiply this one straight across. You'll have much easier numbers to work with. It's still a negative times a positive, so it's still going to be negative. Now you can focus on 3 times 1 is up top, and 8 times 1 is 8 on the bottom. So negative 3 over 8. So that shortcut allows us to get our answer a lot faster. This will be the last time I'll explain the shortcut. All right, give this last one a shot. Press pause. And that's your last example. Make sure you understand what you had to do in order to solve each of these. You turn that mixed number coefficient into an improper fraction. Then you did everything else like you already did. All right, guys. So make sure that you understand the main vocabulary. We were solving the rational coefficients, so fractions in front of our variables. We talked about the multiplicative inverse and coefficients. We explained two ways of explaining how to get rid of a rational coefficient. One was the older way we talked about, just dividing by the coefficient, which and it leads to the same thing. And the second method was just jumping right to that, that second thing, multiplying by the reciprocal. Then you saw the examples I did, and then I gave you steps for each of those based on which one you wrote. You only need to write one of them. And then I did some examples. You notice each of my examples, I'm still doing it the old way we talked about because it's the way we've been doing it for two years. I figure if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you're welcome to jump to that second step where we automatically just start multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. All right, guys, good job. Make sure you have your quality notes filled out, and then come to class prepared. Take care.